to the people. Power to the people. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ralph. I'm, I'm delighted you articulated it so well because it is shifting of power. But let me talk soberly to you all because I know you want to take back America and I know you want to take back America essentially for the left and for the Democratic Party. And let me utter this and say that we did take back part of America uh, in the last congressional race. And I view it uh, in the very sense that we did not so much that we were so able but that the Republicans were so lousy in the Congress and the people rejected them. That's what happened. But now we have the power, and we've had the power since January. And I must say that, like many Americans, I'm a little distressed by the inability to effectively use that power, because if we don't establish a record in the next 18 months, we may not deserve to have the White House and the Congress. Just that simple. You know, what is the most important thing that brought about the power to the Democrats? It was the war. It was George Bush's war. And so we now have to deal with that and deal with it with some leadership. And the best we've seen in the last six months is we've gone from a non-binding resolution to, to four votes on a water bill so that our presidential candidates in the Senate could look good. That's appalling. That's appalling. There is a place. You can end this war. The Democrats can end it. Let me briefly tell you how you do it. You have to be tough. You can't just do politics as usual. You have to be tough. I've offered a piece of legislation that makes it a felony and that's punishable by five years in jail that would apply to the president, the vice president, secretary of treasurer, and the secretary of defense. Now, how do you get that passed? Well, say, well, the president's going to veto it. Of course he's going to veto it. What we have to do is to show that the Congress, the Congress under the Constitution is more powerful than the executive. We've not seen that for a long time. Only the Congress can make law. And so what, what the Congress should do under the leadership, and it should be demanded by the candidates running for president in the Congress, that one, that the legislation be introduced, that it'll be filibustered in the Senate, Fine, let them do that. Call up a cloture vote on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, and you keep calling up a cloture vote every single day until you override the opposition. It'll take 20 days. You'll watch these people turn in front of you. They'll wither on the vine. It gets to the president now, and the president will veto it. And, of course, it, we expect that. It comes back to the Congress. Now you've got two-thirds in the House that you've got to get, and you've got to get two-thirds in the Senate. And so what do you do? Pelosi on one day at noon, same day, read at noon, they bring up the override. Now generally what you hear is you have an override vote, and oh, we can't override, we quit. No way. You have an override vote on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and no weekends off, and no vacations for the Congress. They just stay there. People are dying, are dying, and we do nothing about it. Nothing. And, and I guarantee you in 45 days, that bill will be passed into law, and George Bush will have one choice. Go to jail because he'd be a prima facie case of a felony, and that will, and then you can go right to impeachment, and then the consequences would be criminal act. That's the way you end the war. That guaranteed to work. We can have our presence in the war ended by by Labor Day and all of American troops, and I mean all of American troops, not this over the horizon so that we can later enforce the terrible, the terrible energy bill that we forced them to buy, to, to take in Iraq. No, we can end and have all Americans home by Christmas. Now, doesn't that sound great? Doesn't that sound great? The next point I want to make is very simple. We want to take back America. My hope is, is that the next conference, because Borisaj and the others have done a fabulous job with these conferences, 
It's energized you, and that's what counts, and that's important. The activist must be energized, but you must realize that it's not just taking power for us, it's taking power for the people. And so we have to make sure that the legislation comes into being that will empower people. It's a shift of power from the elites. Now, I must say, you hear take back, you know, take back the power. Americans never had it. Americans never had it. As Ralph pointed out, the Constitution is not a very democratic document. The document, the operative document for us is the Declaration of Independence, where we asserted our freedom in a legislative act. And that was done on behalf of the American people. Now we need, and of course what happened is that because of slavery, we pushed the people aside so that they don't have lawmaking power today. In 24 states, over half the American population makes laws at the state and local level. Why not at the federal level? Our checks and balances, which we're so proud of, are all voided whenever one party, Democrat or Republican, controls all the three departments of government. But when you bring the people into the operation of government as lawmakers, that changes because they cannot be co-opted by whatever happens in representative government. We need a parallel system where the people can make laws in partnership with their elected officials, and it's a win-win because the American people are qualified to make laws on every facet, every policy that affects their lives. That will free up representative government, the officialdom of, of the Congress and others, to do a better job on the day-to-day -day operations of government. My plea to you is focus on this. It's out of the box. It's different from what you customarily see. But, but as was stated by Cicero, and that is freedom is participation in power, and the American people cannot participate except every two years, every four years, every six years, and in the meantime, they go protest. Whenever I see a protest, I see a situation that proves that our democracy is not yet fully mature, and that's what we must do, is make our democracy mature, and the challenge is for you to do it in the hustings. Thank you very much. Freedom, power is Freedom is sharing power, and we don't have enough power. Thank you.